This is the Power Break Podcast, number 180, titled Fullness of Blessing. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to bobrubaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. Hey, man, welcome back from vacation slash Christmas break slash go hang out on the beach. (laughs) Yeah, and uh, welcome from uh, cold North Carolina at the moment, right? It is a little chilly, yes. It is uh, in the, well, it was in the 20s when I woke up this morning, and I think it's in the 30s now. It'll probably get to like 45 today, but you know, man, I'm okay with it. You know, it's probably from uh, wearing that police outfit, all polyester with a with a vest that, man, I will take cold over hot all day, twice on Sunday. So, yeah. How's the weather down well, there? Well, we're recording this on the 5th of January. This plays back uh, beginning. It's released on the 11th of January. But today is uh, a pretty good day. It's around 60 degrees, 64 degrees this morning. And uh, nice. anyway, looking forward to the 70s today. So it's, it's one of those temperatures that people like during this time of year. And uh, we had a couple of days when it was actually down near the 40s. <gasps> in the 40s. Wow. I thought, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway, rather this is not a weather report, folks. We just like to talk about what's going on. And, JT, I understand that uh, you and Amy and your family are now caught up with something called a treadmill. What's going on? Oh, yeah. So, you know, one of the things about living in, uh, well, where we live specifically, it's... Um, there's no such thing as flat ground. So you're either going up or you're going down, you know, and usually the grades are pretty steep. So um, what Amy found out the hard way is if you run on that all the time, her, the, your knees start to start to really get take a take a beating, for lack of a better way to put it. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's true. So yeah. the treadmill was really just to supplement, you know, not running outside all the time. But it's awesome. You know, I, I, I got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, Nordic Track has this thing called the iFit. And um, that's their program where they release, like, uh, new workouts all the time. You can sign up for different trainers. And, um, you know, I was telling you earlier off air, I yesterday I, I went hiking in Nepal, which was pretty awesome. And then this morning I went hiking in Chile on the side of a, uh, of a volcano. So... <laughs> Supplementing so that, you can yeah, that with uh, with JT rod. gets around, folks. That's right, <laughs> man. Let me tell you that the amount of uh, frequent flyer miles is going to go up for sure. <laughs> well, let's just take the opportunity as we begin today's podcast just to thank everybody for taking time to listen to our podcast. Uh, we are the Power Break Podcast uh, with JT, who's also known as John Trebino. Actually, he's John Trebino, also known as JT. <laughs> it's probably more but, accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bob Brubaker, also known as BB. Well, no, nevertheless, bottom uh, bracket. We are the Power Break. <laughs> we are the Power Break podcast. We come to you uh, through the means of internet communication, and uh, people download our podcast, and we appreciate that. We appreciate those who leave us a rating and or a review every time you download the podcast and leave us a review and or a rating that really does help us and also telling others about the podcast through social media, however you do it, letting other people know about the power break podcast. We appreciate that very much. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, you know, and tis the season to be grateful and look back and, and look at your blessings. And as you go into a new year and, uh, man, our listeners are such a blessing to me and the fact that we can do something to give back to other people and, and they get some, at the very least, entertainment out of it. Um, but I think people get a lot more out of it than that. So what a blessing. So if you leave a, a five-star rating, what that does is it makes it easier for other people to find us. So we do appreciate that. I just have to say that we really appreciate the guys at uh, Strong by Design having us on the podcast and mentioning our podcast when we were there. And I just noticed as I looked at the 
uh, a review of our downloads that when we were on that podcast, woo, it went up. Wow, that's <laughs> awesome. So good. People said, who are these dudes? We're going to find out what they are on the Power Break podcast. Anyway, thanks for listening to the podcast, folks. Today we're talking about fullness of blessing. So, JT, as we always like to begin a question for you, what do you think of when you hear the these words or read the words fullness of blessing. You know, it's interesting. Um, prior to really sitting down with God's word, I, I had a very different uh, idea of what fullness of blessing would be. Um, I, and I think, unfortunately, a lot of us get fullness of blessing confused. So we kind of look at it as, you know, the prosperity in our life is the fullness of blessing. So the, um, you know, we, we, we don't struggle for money. We have a good job. Um, you know, our entertainment is, is, is something that we get a lot of enjoyment out of. We a lot, have a lot of like physical blessing kind of thing. Um, you know, and as I've matured as a Christian, it's turned into the fullness of what Christ has done for me. So the fullness of blessing mm, is really good. what what Christ gave us. I mean, it was just given to us. It was, you are now sons and daughters of the one true God. And you are mm -hmm. brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ. And we are all part of one body. That's what I think about as the fullness of blessing now. So it's not materialistic in any way, and it's got nothing, honestly, to do with this world. <laughs> for me, it's all about what Christ did for me on the spiritual realm. And, and um, you know, as, as a consequence, you know, the church can blossom if they kind of understand that. The fullness is in the blessing of Christ, and the fullness is us as a church together all doing what Christ called us to do, which is bring others to him uh, and and really love God and love each other. That's that's really what he called us to do. How about you, man? What do you think about? Well, of course, uh, since I wrote the article, it was all about what you talked about there. But, yeah, the fullness of blessing is many times we think about the fullness of blessing is uh, having a good life now. But it's far more than that. And it's far more than as we want to talk about today that um, it begins and ends with the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's accomplished for us and all that God has for us in Christ, as the scriptures teach us. And even though we may not feel like it at times, the point of the scriptures is this, that we are recipients of the fullness of blessing when we consider all that is ours as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. As it says in John 1 and verse 16, for from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. So today is the consideration of the fullness of blessing. So cool, man. Let's continue to talk more about that as we turn to your blog. Folks, if you haven't been to BobRubaker.com, head over there. Check out all the resources. The resources are constantly growing and changing. And Bob's always writing books and doing crazy stuff like that. Well, I just enjoy my retirement. So... I'm probably. Oh no! Now, we're, once we get things going, you're going to have a little corner in the on the website. I need to talk to that guy, the the webmaster. But uh, Eric, if you're listening to this, please help us out, man. Make some changes for yeah. us. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you know, to it's, j just to kind of throw out um, a compliment for the actual blog. You know, the last blog when it came out, bitter or better, um, me and the boy sat down on Sunday. And we went through that whole thing and we talked about it in detail, all the different concepts that you laid out in there. Uh, and we really did an in-depth Bible study based on that. So, folks, it's such a great resource. I would encourage you to sign up for it. It'll come every Monday for free. It's just good stuff. Uh, but let's continue to talk more about fullness of blessing. Well, there's an old test that people have used to determine if you're an optimist or a pessimist. They'll say, do you see the cup half full or half empty? Now, if you see that the glass or the cup is half full, you're living in the anticipation of more. Whereas if you see the glass as half empty, you live in anticipation of less. As we look over the struggles over this past couple of years in which many people have looked at the trend of focusing on loss. So the tendency is to anticipate more loss to come, which makes one depressed. 
However, if you, in the midst of the situation, can turn your eyes upon the blessings that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ, then no matter what our current situation, there is an anticipation of more to come. Listen to this verse. Romans chapter 15, verse 29. Paul says, I know that when I come to you, I will come in the fullness of the blessing of Christ. Isn't that an interesting statement that the Apostle Paul, who is persecuted and struggled in every hand in his ministry, nevertheless, he anticipated coming to Rome in the fullness of the blessing of Christ. So cool. If we can just get a handle on how Paul had such confidence in the fullness of blessing, we too could live in anticipation rather than focus on the less. So fullness of blessing. I think there's more to it there, JT. Yeah, I, I think so too. I, I have a question for you as a, as uh, a pastor throughout your career. Have you seen a trend to where more people are becoming glass half empty people or glass half full people? Has there been a trend that you could see or has it kind of always been the same? I think that over the last couple of years has been become more prevalent because people have focused on their loss, you know, beginning with the, the whole entire COVID thing and all the things going on politically and everything else in life. And it has really put a strain on people that are followers of Christ because they listen to the news rather than focus on the scriptures. Yeah. But during this time, you also see the people that are truly focused on the word of God and things that are talked about in the scriptures, that they their focus is so much on that, that even though things around them seem to be falling apart, oh, they have this anticipation of something that's even better. Like it says in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, Paul says to put on the things, uh, all things were put under his feet, the Lord Jesus Christ, and gave him head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So the blessings of Christ is full because he is full or complete. In fact, he was known by doing everything to the fullness. Remember when he fed the multitude or when he blessed Peter and the others who were fishing to cast their nets on the other side of the boat? What happened? The result was, you would say, a fullness of blessing. So it begins with he, the Lord Jesus Christ, who himself is the fullness of blessing. And he's not stingy then in the way that he blesses his people. <laughs> I think that's important. Don't you think that, JT? Oh, yeah. I think that's he's huge. The, yeah. He's the fullness. And then he's not stingy. That's what we have to understand. God's grace and his unmerited favor toward us and gifted us through the Lord Jesus Christ because of him and his fullness as God manifests in the flesh. We have received grace, but even more than that, grace upon grace, as it says in John chapter 1, verse 16. That's hard to comprehend. Favor upon favor, all because of him. Man, so good. And, you know, I, I really got to look at myself and say, all right, what that really translates to me in my head is giving your best, right? Putting your best effort into things. Like Christ wasn't stingy. He didn't, when he made wine, right, at the, at the <laughs> wedding in Cana, he didn't make That's bad right. wine. He didn't make average wine. <laughs> According to the banquet master, he made the best wine. So, yeah, man, how, how cool is that, right? Yeah, we're going to talk more about uh, re rehearsing this. But anyway, I, and that's a little portion of the article that we encourage you to check out. And, of course, some of the things we talk about in the questions and answer portion of the Power Break podcast today. But just to think about it, the fullness of blessing that is ours in the Lord Jesus Christ, because he is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And, and it says in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9 that we are complete in him. So because of that flows, as it says in John chapter 1, verse 16, grace upon grace, fullness, the fullness of blessing. Check it out. The, that's the name of the article. The Power Break, Power Break blog is found at BobBrewBaker.com. And check out the fullness of blessing. So what's happening this week, Bob? Anything new we need to know about? Thought it'd be a good time to talk about it. We talk about the fullness of blessing, the book that I wrote called The Power in the Valley. Power in the Valley. What I did was take a look at some of the Old Testament valleys and their circumstances around those valleys and how they're named. And the names are very significant, like the Valley of Achor being the Valley of Trouble or Affliction. And God promises a blessing in that and the fact that he would give them uh, a doorway of hope. So... The fullness of blessing is found in The Power in the Valley, and you'll find it at BobRebecker.com. The book is there, and as you go to BobRebecker.com, uh, click on the resources and scroll through, through the resources to the books, and through the books you'll find Power in the Valley. 
And while you're at BobRebecker.com, check out the sermon links of the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church. Heading onward in the book of Acts as we look at some of the things that happened to the Apostle Paul when he was taken into, um, well, you might say captivity or you might say the fact that he was thrown into prison uh, while they were waiting trial. And he's, well, we'll talk more about that. But check it out at the sermon links. You'll find them at BobRubaker.com. This is the Power Break Podcast. I'm JT along with Bob Brubaker, and this is time on the podcast for questions and answers. If you have a question for me or for Bob, feel free to email me at jt at bobrubaker.com and we'll get to answering your questions on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Are you ready for question number one from the spiritual side of life? I know that's a shock for everybody (laughs) that we're going to start off with the spiritual, but hey. That's the. I think people realize we have a system. We have a pattern. (laughs) We have a pattern. That's right. It makes us comfortable. One of these days we'll just break the pattern. One of these days we'll just break the pattern. Just we'll start off with the physical next week. You're right. Let's do that. Well, no. Well, we'll we'll start out with JT singing a song. Oh man, I thought you were happy that we got more listeners. That's a quick way to lose them all. (laughs) <laughs> oh, sir. Yeah, you don't want that to happen. All right, so question number Were one. Were you going to sing the national anthem? I did. That was the only thing that, can pop, that popped in my head. You would think, like, all the passion songs that that went through my head as you were talking about your article, like all these great worship songs that I come up with the national anthem. What a fail. What a fail. All right, so question number one from a spiritual side of life. Why should a Christian hold this fullness of blessing concept, even when things seem not to point to such a wonderful concept, because, you know, let's face it, it, there's a lot of trial and tribulation right now for folks. And, you know, the, the landscape is ever changing as far as the world around us, the nation that, you know, we were 20 years ago, as opposed to the nation that we are now, the way people treat each other, everything's kind of a, a moving target right now. So, why is it so important for us to hold to this fullness of blessing from the spiritual side? Well, if we're a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, first and foremost, every blessing that we have in this life and the life to come is all in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the way, it says about him that there is no change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we first look at, as we mentioned, John 1 and verse 16, from his fullness, we've received grace upon grace. So first of all, As a Christian, you look to Christ. Christ does not change. And from his fullness, we have all received grace for grace. And he's the fullness of the Godhead deity in his body. For he's the fullness of the Godhead bodily, as it says. And we are complete in him. Then in Ephesians chapter 1, listen to the verses 3 through 6. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. That's fullness, right? All right. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and uh, he chose uh, that we should be holy and blameless before him. And in love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has blessed us in the beloved. So we first of all, consider everything is about Christ and that's our status in him. And because of him, everything just flows out to its fullness to us. So when you look at the situations of life, we first of all look at we, why should we have this different attitude is because, well, it's all about Christ. It's not about our situation. Not about us. Yeah, you're right. Secondly, we consider how the Lord Jesus Christ does things. He's not stingy. I mentioned earlier that in the article I mentioned about the feeding of the 5,000. You ever think about that? He fed 5,000 with the loaves and fishes, you know? Yeah, I've I've talked about that so many times, you know, in my head. It's like, you know, he took something that was considered not adequate and (laughs) to say the least, you know, when, when the best you got is, yeah, this kid over here has got some bubble gum, you know, that's kind of how it felt. Um, but he was able to make that into not only uh, more food, but everything that was needed to the point to where it was abundant, right? And, and abundant so, because everybody had sufficient and it says they gathered up 12 baskets full at the end Crazy. of that. It's awesome. Uh, and then, then, of course, the fishing results when Peter is fishing and Jesus says to cast your nets on the other side and the and the 
the nets were overflowing. They had to get help from other people to pull the net to the shore just to uh, because they couldn't pull them into the boat. There was so there was so much fish in those in those in, in, in the nets. So that's why we look at you know we should look at a text of scripture like in Ephesians chapter three and verse twenty. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than we ask or think. Or I like as Eugene Peterson put in his. Uh, a translation there, which is actually, he said, more than he can, we could ever ask or think or dream or even imagine. So that's why we should consider the fullness of blessing. It's all it's in Christ and just the way he does things. He's not stingy. It just flows in an abundance. Yeah, no doubt. I, you know, that's one of the things I think I really love about where I live right now. And, you know, it, it's the same in Florida. I just, you know, it, when you're around the same thing over and over again, and, and where we live, Pinellas County, honestly, it's a little overpopulated. There's a, you know, we've, everywhere you look is what, is what human beings decided would look nice, not what God decided, right? <laughs> At least it seems like it. <laughs> so up here, you know, if, if I ever have any doubt about how, how he goes above and beyond in everything that he does, I just look out the window. Um, or I look up the mountain that I'm climbing, or I look down the mountain that I'm climbing, or I look at... You know, just about anything around us, you know, there's 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 a lot of great reminders for me up here of, you know, it was not not only am I going to create a world, but I'm going to make it abundant. I'm going to make it glorious. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to go above and beyond. So, um, yeah. So whenever I kind of look at my kids and, you know, I kind of translate that for them, I was like, oh, OK. So have you heard in Scripture it says that you should do everything as if you're doing it for the Lord? Yeah. So do you think this was your best work? Uh, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. I was like, so is that what Christ did? You know something? There's 5,000 people. I'm going to, I think I'm only going to make enough fish and bread for 2,500 people. That's not the way he operated, <laughs> yeah. right? That's yeah, right. Yeah. And That's I talked right. a little bit about the wine earlier. I mean, he, he didn't make bad wine. He, he only made the best, right? That's right. Well, one other thing that I'd say to consider as you as you look at the holding to this fullness of blessing concept, even in the midst of things that may not seem that great, is to consider the future blessings that are ours because of the victory over sin, Satan, and death itself by the Lord Jesus Christ. When he makes it known, the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8 and verse 18, that we are to consider the sufferings of this present world that aren't even worth comparing mm. to the glory that shall be revealed in us. No matter how bad things are now, what we're going to have on the other side in glory is just so good that it's not even worth comparing. And so if, he says, if in, if in Christ we have hope just in this life, we have all people to be pitied. But as it is written, he says, no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for them who love him. Now, we may not be experiencing now what we think is the fullness of blessing, but we really are. But we have, uh, as our status before God, fullness of blessing in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have a glorious future along with help now, comfort, encouragement that is ours. And really, we have the fullness of blessing right now. Yeah, you know, and that, that is such a perfect transition into question number two. Because from the mental aspect, it's important for us to remind ourselves of certain things to keep us from getting pessimistic. So question number two what happens and how do we get out of the pessimistic attitude that often comes over us when we cannot really grasp the fullness of the blessing that, that we have? I would say what happens is we've lost sight of the prize that is ours, not by our good works, of course, or our merit, but simply out of the grace of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. When he says the word became flesh and dwelt among us, we have seen his glory the glory is of the only Son of the Father, the full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he who, uh, whom I said he was comes after me, ranks before me, because he was before me. For from his fullness we've all received grace upon grace. How do we get back or get with that? We turn, I remember the song, you probably have played this, JT. What's that? Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full into his wonderful face, and the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I have played that song multiple is, times, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. 
The word says in in book of Romans chapter 10, what does it say? The word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. That word of faith, which we proclaim that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, with the mouth one confesses and is saved. And in Philippians, Paul says, Brothers, I don't consider myself to have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, I strain forward for what lies ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So, how do we get rid of that pessimistic attitude? Put it behind us. Yep. Reach forward to what is, what is before us. Fullness of blessing in Christ. It's all there. Um, you know, I was talking to a person this morning that uh, uh, I was doing some discipleship and um, he was talking about how he didn't like his job and all. And I said, do you ever think about the fact that God may have you in that position to wait to see if you'll be satisfied with him in, in a circumstance that may not seem be so nice? Uh, and he kind of scratched his head. And I said, because if we're not satisfied, we get filled with bitterness. Yep. And bitterness will will stop the flow of grace in our lives. And it was a good admonition. I'm not so great. And, you know, it's not it's not me. It's God's word that comes out. And so that's what we have to watch out for, because if we hold on to a pessimistic attitude, it's the precursor or really a part of being bitter. And if we're bitter about our situation, we're bitter towards God, really, because he's the author of the situation we're saying and we're kind of mad at him. And next thing you know, it stops the flow of the other things in our lives as well. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's funny you talk about work stuff because I'd be the first to admit I, I failed pretty miserably the last year probably I was at Largo because, um, you know, truth be told, I had just – I got so sick of being around people that were so negative, pessimistic, so judging um, and just kind of watching that whole thing, um, you know, it would – but I knew, and you always brought me back to, you know, God has me there for a reason. When I look back on it, the reason was really something as simple as so several people had somebody that they could go to that would always look out for the, their best interest and would always take care of them, you know, and when they had an issue on a call or when they, something came up in their home life that interfered with work stuff. They knew I'd be understanding as opposed to other people that wouldn't be. And, you know, all those things were, um, became really apparent when I looked back on it. So what I would encourage somebody to do is don't become bitter. Like I did. Um, I would encourage you to really keep the perspective of, you know, I don't need to be social with these people. Uh, if you know, they're doing things that, that I know aren't ethical or moral or, or whatever. Um, I'm here for a purpose, and that's probably to be that that light on the hill or to be that lamppost, you know, um, and that's so hard to keep that perspective. So I, I'm trying to be encouraging to people, you know, just keep your eye on the prize and always be that, that person uh, with the glass half full attitude because um, I have I struggled through that my last pro- year of my career where – it was just obvious, you know, that there was nothing I could do. And I physically wasn't, I, I mentally wasn't able to really, um, you know, be, be true to the stuff that I wanted to be as far as staying there was concerned. But, um, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's really hard when you're a Christian and it's getting harder just simply because less and less people believe in intrinsic truth and that scripture is that truth. Um, but man, you gotta you gotta keep it locked down. You gotta keep it focused on what's important, and that's that's the fullness of the blessing that you've already received, and that you will receive, um, you know, as as we pass from this life into the next. But man, it's so hard. Easier said than done, right? And that's for that's for sure. And but we have to also keep in mind one of the reasons that God has you had you where you are and where you were, and has you are where you are now. All of us. Is because he's working in us yeah. that which is pleasing in his sight. And he's changing us in our character. Yep, that is for sure. All right, so question number three. We're going to turn to the physical aspect of life. So this one I couldn't wait to get to because this is a time of year where it's perfect to take our exercise to the next level by making um, 
a periodic schedule or annual training plan. So let's discuss the process and how that's beneficial because I just went through because I decided that I was going to um, – probably do a couple of races this year. Um, so I started to really look at what the races were and I started to look at what physically I needed to be prepared for if I was going to race in those. Um, and then I started to make my plan. So this is the time of year. It's a, it, well, what do you say, man, what's the process and why is it beneficial? Well, I'm going to throw out some ideas, and I, like you, have uh, taken this on myself to, to make some, some real changes in my training schedule because I'm heading back to the pool and uh, trying to get some swimming in to, so I can do some some uh, swimming events awesome. and also uh, uh, keep up my training in, in, uh, in the weights and also on the bike. So, okay, I'm going to throw out some ideas. You jump in where you think your take is necessary there, JT, because you always have a lot of good things. I know we've talked about this in in our training together many times as we've trained over the years. The first of all is the why. Consider taking something as important as physical training, which something like that is going to make a big difference in your life, be taken just for granted, or can you do something significantly without a plan? Absolutely not. Even though many people do, the point is this, it would be better with a plan. And also consider the fact that our bodies are built on cycles, and the more we cooperate with the cyclical principle the more we'll achieve as in riding the wave instead of trying to swim upstream. Okay, with that said, here's a few things. First of all, take a 12-month calendar. I think this is what you did, JT. You took a 12-month calendar. It is, yep. And the second thing is you mark, mark the dates of significant events that you want to do, races or challenges or whatever that may be. I think you've done that too, haven't I you? I have, yep. All right. And then you take the mark the dates of the things you know that would be interference with your physical goals. Good things, but things that create challenges like vacations or family events, etc. Okay, and then you assess your previous year. Take note of the things that went well and accomplishing physical goals and the things upon which you need to focus in the coming year. And then write out your physical goals for the coming year and then begin to create a training plan working in small increments to the time of the challenge that you have on your calendar, making note of the things that you need to do to work on from last year. And then be sure to accommodate for those interference dates so that you're not you're able to work around them and be sure to allow for buildup, taper, and recovery from the events. In other words, if you don't allow for the interference dates that you know are going to happen, you, then you get mad about it, and then you, you suffer a loss anyway. Yeah. Anyway, it's, it's simply a matter of building a grid based upon the things that you want to accomplish into the time that you have and making the most of that time in smaller cycles. So you build and rest and build some more and rest some more. Anyway, your thoughts on that, JT? I, I know that's kind of a quick overview of making a periodic schedule, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, one of the things that, um, and it's just because of how much weather affects my ability to be on or off the trail up here. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. I have made alternative things um a part of my schedule so if it's if i'm supposed to go out and i'm supposed to lock myself into a a heart rate ride for an hour and a half or two hours or whatever i may not be able to do that on the trails that i want to maybe i end up having to go to the trails that are open when it's bad weather which tend to be more hilly and more rocky and and you really can't lock your heart rate in so i've built in like different kinds of workouts that can accomplish what I want to accomplish, but not be exactly what I wanted to do because the reality is, is weather's always going to get in the way. And I'm sure it does in Florida, but it it seems to do that up here a lot more. So um, that's a, that's a great idea. That's a great idea because that's accommodating for the fact that this could be an interruption and then you'd scratch your head and say, I can't go out and do what I want to do today. But if you have an alternate plan, you just, Shift gears, right? Yeah. I mean, yesterday was a perfect example of that. Yesterday, I went out to Lake James where I normally do a lot of my cardio rides. And, you know, I totally forgot about the fact that the snow's melting that happened two days ago. Well, they closed the trail because they don't want the trail to get ruined by, you know, people like me going out there and and riding in the mud. So I went bushwhacking, which basically I made my own trail through the forest on my mountain bike and uh i got a good ride in i 
and you know, I, I didn't get frustrated because at first when I got there and I saw that the trail was closed, I was like, <gasps> what am I going to do now? But you know, I just, you just gotta, gotta know that there's an alternative, um, and know that, you know, you're going to run into these all the time because that's what life does. Like, you know, for me, a lot of it is the kids. Like, you know, Amy, Amy said to me, hey, don't forget about the orthodontics appointment today. And I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that happens to me all the time where, you know, I either it didn't make the calendar or it did, but it didn't hit the group calendar or I just didn't look at my calendar. I mean, there's all kinds of things going on, but you got to be flexible and start to think about other ways you can get your exercise if you don't have enough time for what you want to do or if what you want to do That's is right. not open. That's right. Good thoughts, JT. Well, in all these things, of course, it takes discipline to make this schedule, to keep the schedule, and to make those adjustments. But as we point out every week, discipline does make the difference in all aspects of life. Check out today's show notes at BobBrewBaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. Today is show number 180. Man, it's going by fast. And submit your questions by email to jt at bobrubiger.com and listen for our answer on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Quick word for Power in the Valley. It's a book that I wrote about the valleys in the Old Testament and how they apply to our lives today and the blessings which you can enjoy the fullness of blessing even in the valley. Check it out at bobrubaker.com. Well, thank you for joining us for the Power Break Podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast and check out notes, news, Bob's weekly blog, and other cool things at bobbrewbaker.com. And listen next time for the Power Break Podcast.